With us now is Nick. Welcome to the show. How are you? I'm terrific. How are you? Good. What a view we have today. Yeah, this is uh, Mill Creek, um, Zag Harbor, and uh, yeah. I'm, I'm looking outside and I'm thinking, okay, this is one of those glorious days uh, sometime in the end of October when all, you know, all the things are changing and life is regenerating as it dies, there's a new birth, right? So one of the things that I liked learning about you is that you're kind of an extraordinary individual and the fact that you do not only just residential construction, mm -hmm. but also commercial construction. Right. So you're kind of like, a, I would say, a, a renaissance type of a person where you things come to you in a dream, you visualize things, and then voila. Now, have you always been like that? Well, I grew up in a, in a construction family, so I started out very young, like as a very little kid, and I was mainly a framer. Okay. Um, my father was a framer, and I always thought it was very amazing how we'd pull up to a foundation, it'd be a pile of wood, and then we'd leave and there'd be a house standing. You know, so uh, it, it still amazes me to this day. I mean, back then we were building uh, tract homes so you could literally frame and sheet the house in two or three days. Now it's a lot different. You know, okay. you know now uh, we build custom homes and you know, we do uh, renovations to restaurants and it's months long process just to get it closed in. And I moved on from that into general construction. So we do the entire project. So typically like for a house like this, we were here for 13 months, you know, so. Uh, now did you help, the, did the family come to you with drawings or sketches and they said, hey, can you turn these into architectural renderings? Like you brought in an architect. Like what's the process when somebody says, I'm ready for my forever home? Well, that's a great question because it, it varies. Okay, so this house in particular, they happen to be very close friends of mine. Um, they used to live across the street from me and they came to me and said, I want to build a forever home. You know, so I hooked them up with a great architect uh, that we work with, Sal Cicerelli, and they got together and spoke about what their needs were. And we commiserated and we came up with this design. And then, you know, we put a budget together and we built it. It's not always like that. Okay. A lot of times what we do is we get plans from an architect who we've worked with before, who feels we're a great fit for their client, or we have a client who was recommended to us or saw us through social media, and they come to us with plans, and then the bidding process begins, and we're bidding against five different people. Mm. And, you know, um, I have a great staff that works on bidding the projects, and then hopefully we win the bid, and we get the job. Isn't it exciting though for you to realize that perhaps and probably this home will last for many generations? Like the quality that you put in it today, right? When we say forever home, it's not just like maybe for your lifetime, but it's a forever home. The construction's solid. Absolutely. So I think it's better to do things with a higher quality, you know, for the yeah. longevity of it. I agree. And especially here in Sag Harbor, because we have houses in Sag Harbor that are hundreds of years old. Um, and the builders are long gone, you know, and it's funny, I've said to um, my wife and kids over the years, like, I, you know, what is my legacy? What am I going to leave behind? You know, like, um, you know, I'm not a politician. Uh, I'm not, you know, some famous person, but it's these houses. Like, I, they get mad at me because we'll drive down, you know, 27, go into Montauk, and I'll be like, I built that house. I built that <laughs> restaurant. I built, you know, and a lot of them, I didn't actually build from the ground up like this house we built you know there was a house here we knocked it down which is very typical here and we built it from the ground up so I built this house but when I was framing which I did for 35 years um, I've only hung up my tool belt maybe 10 years ago um, and I only did that because I watched what framing did to my father because he framed into his late 70s but I always felt and I still feel that when I walk up to a foundation and I build the structure of a house, I built that house. Yes. You know, I mean, it's a very literal example, mm -hmm. but my family does get mad at me like, you didn't build it, pal, you framed it. <laughs> <laughs> but it's like the skeleton of the house. Like exactly. you, it's frame the is like it's the bones. Yeah. You gotta have good bones. Yeah, so there's a difference between you built the house and you were the builder on the house. Right, I In understand. In this particular one, I'm the builder. 
way back in the day when residential communities started, I guess it was maybe Levittown is one of the very first My dad worked neighborhoods. Levittown. That's what I was going to ask you. <laughs> and so you do come from a longevity of, you know, you were saying you were framing an entire neighborhood. Right. So. We used to pull up to um, neighborhoods and there would just be foundations. Okay. And then, you know, when I was, I guess I was 14, I, my, I bought a moped and uh, I lived in Sable and my dad was working off Isaac Avenue and I had to leave school at the end of the day and ride my moped down to Isaac Avenue and look for the foundations. And I would see, oh, there's guys framing all the way down there. I'd go, I'd park my moped and throw it in the back of his truck on the way home. You know, so that's, that's where I came from. And then to come out here, even when my dad was alive and he was working with me, he would be like, I can't believe you're building this house. I can't believe you've been here for a month because they're gigantic yeah. and they're full of steel. Back then, it was just like, get it done as fast as you can. People and need a place to live, exactly. right? But this is a pleasure. Thank you so much. And I know we might do a little field trip. Uh, Absolutely, so. yeah. I think we should go into Sag Harbor, maybe okay. you know, take a walk through. Um, you'll get to meet my staff as well. Uh, I, I, I think it's very important uh, to note that I'm able to I cannot do it on my own. I have a terrific staff um, and we work together and uh, I'd love you to meet them. Lovely, thank you so much, Nick. All right, thank you. Uh, how long have you been in this location? Okay, so we've been in this location for about two years now. Okay. We were formerly in East Hampton, um, but because we're the property managers of all of these buildings, when the um, Sagtown Coffee Building burned down during the fire um, of, in the movie theater, we were contracted to rebuild it. So in due course, they asked us if we would be the property managers, and we were. We, we've done it, and then when a unit became available, we moved in. Now, our office in East Hampton was gigantic. This one's very small, but we love being in this community. My kids go to school here. They come in after school. They drop off their backpacks. During nice weather, we have meetings out here with clients. It's very central. It's lovely. We love it here. Yeah, and for, for you, someone like yourself, most of your work is outside of your office anyway, right? So Absolutely. this is perfect. Yes, if we need to meet clients, we could go upstairs and have coffee, we could go to Cape Paso, we could go to San, if it's not nice out here, you know, so. We're having a great time in Sag Harbor. Next time, please join us. Stay tuned for more. We've been living it up right here with Nick.